This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash tipsquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be look at color correcting for two different light sources. I took this photo recently as a test shot, and as I was setting up, I noticed two different kinds of light in the image. We have the warm lighting up here over this bar, but then down here underneath we can see a cooler light, and this is actually coming from natural sunlight coming through the windows in the front of this building. Whenever we're dealing with two different kinds of light sources, we have a struggle, and we have to figure out a way to make them match. In this case, I like the warmth of the tungsten lighting here on the top, but it's a little bit too much, and I want to bring it back more towards a neutral color. But when I do, if I take the white balance and click here on something that I think ought to be white, we're going to see that the area that is receiving the daylight becomes very cool at this point. So how can we correct this? There are a number of ways that you can fix this, but today we're going to explore a way within Photoshop using color range and using some blending modes. So let's switch over to Photoshop where I have this image already loaded. Now what I'd like to do is to take the area that has this blue cast and neutralize it somewhat. Now I don't want to totally neutralize it, but I do want to make it match more of this area behind the bar, where we have a little bit more of a neutral color, still slightly warm. What I'm going to do is start by selecting the blue areas in this image. And I'm going to do that by going to the Select menu and then choosing Color Range. With the Color Range dialog box open, I'm going to set the fuzziness to about 40 or so. And then I'm going to make sure that Localize Color Clusters is selected. Now I'm going to click in this blue area here to start my selection, but then I'm going to hold the Shift key down, and I'm going to click again and drag. And as I do, notice the white area here in the preview showing the selected areas. We can see that it's picking up most of the blue areas, and that's pretty good. We'll want to make sure we get as much as we can without going too far. And I can see that there's some area here on the door that may not have been picked up, so I'm going to drag across that, again holding the Shift key so that I'm increasing my selection. That looks pretty good, and I'm going to click OK, and we can see the selection now defined by the marching ants. Now there are a few areas that I don't really want to color correct, so I'm going to switch to the Lasso tool by pressing the letter L, and then I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key down, and I'm simply going to drag around the areas that I don't want to change. And that would be this area right here. So I'll exclude that from the selection, but I've left this door and I've left the area under the bar, all these blue areas. Now what I want to do is make the color of these areas match the color here behind the bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my foreground color swatch. Now move this out of the way, and now with the sample size set to a larger sample, let's say 11 by 11, I'm going to choose one of these warm brown colors from behind the bar. And there it is. Now that we've got this color as the foreground color, I'll create a new layer and I'll press Alt Backspace, and that's Option Delete on the Mac. And that fills this area with that warm color. At this point, I can deselect by pressing Ctrl or Command D, and now I'm going to change my layers blend mode. So if we look here at the layers panel, we can choose this dropdown to set the blending mode, and we're going to want to set this to color. Now when we do, we can see right away that we've done a pretty good job of matching, but if we need to tweak it a little further, we can actually modify the opacity to dial this up or down, and I think about 80% or so. Looks pretty good. And now I've got an image where the color is more or less uniform. At this point, if we've got an area that was left out, perhaps it didn't make it into the selection, we can simply zoom in and find that area and switch to the paintbrush tool. And with the same color still selected, we can simply get a small brush 
and paint over the areas with this color. Again, I've got this new layer selected, so I'm painting on this layer. And anywhere I paint, even if I paint right here, we'll see the blue is replaced with this brownish color. So we can paint out the color cast this way. So by using Select Color Range, we were able to select all the areas with the blue color contamination and then use that for a selection to fill with a more appropriate color. We sampled an appropriate background color and then we changed the blending mode of this layer to a color blending mode and reduced the opacity to match it for a better match. At this point, we could take this image further and work with it and do anything else that we want to, and we've got an image with unified color. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tips, tricks, and other information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.